So I wanted to briefly talk about the future of productivity software and where I believe the market is going and naturally help you understand your own productivity apps for the future of work. So welcome, my name is Francesco D'Alessio. If you're new to this channel, um, it is a side channel to Tool Finder, which is our main channel. Um, and I have been in the productivity space for way too long, over 10 years, categorizing, reviewing, and giving you insight into the productivity tool market. And something I have been talking for around about five years on is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the role that will play in the future of our tools. And the future of our tools is looking interesting. Um, and I think you have to go down to the root of what a productivity app is to really understand it. Now, productivity apps want to help you get things done. That is naturally a byproduct of what happens. But what happens when using an app and organizing it goes away in terms of management on your end, manualization of the process, and even interfaces? Well, you may not even need that app that category of apps becomes something entirely different in terms of it becoming more of a mindful practice. Now, if you have to think about it like anything, productivity apps will turn into the journaling apps, the uh, reflection apps, the activity that you do to restructure how you're thinking versus getting something actually done. Now, the reason being is because productivity apps won't need interfaces. They won't need anything like vastly impressive. They won't need your input apart from two things, decisions and creativity. So you will be processing information that they provide and choosing decisions that it prompts you with. So for example, if I start my day, I'll open my laptop, maybe not even my laptop, maybe my glasses, and I'll look and I'll see decisions or options that I'll have to go to do. For example, it may even bring back a report of research and insights, and I may need to go, let's action this, or let's do this, or let's go deeper on this. And the concept is you're making a decision. So you're in the driver's seat, you're the manager of the software, and that's one of the things, and then it will go away and do more elements of that. Then there's a secondary element, which is creativity, and it's these are the two differentiators of the human experience. For example, someone, uh, person A, person B, the difference between them will not be how much they can get done. It's the decision and the creative pathway they go to to reach that decision. So how does that look like in work? So for example, you could uh, be deciding on a major event that you're doing and it will be the decisions you take with what information you have and the creativity you go down with what decisions you've made that will impact the end result and will make you look different from person A to person B. So that's really where productivity is heading, decisions and creativity. And there might not even be any need for interfaces. You may be entirely doing this through voice or through a non-interface structure, like a quick chat experience. And these interactions will become completely meaningless in terms of the actual organization of your day. Now, for some people, that feels like a little bit of a real step back because a lot of people do get that sense of control and that sense of organization through their daily productivity. And that's what apps uh, like automation software will help fill the, the gap for a lot of people. However, that's where the mindfulness element come in. It's going to be incredibly interesting to see apps like Obsidian, apps like Todoist, apps like Evernote, if they don't evolve, to be these apps that people go to as a way to try and control their situation versus actually getting anything done. So that's where I believe the future of productivity to be. And it's going to be a really interesting way forward. Productivity in a whole is actually more just work software. So that's why it's going to be an interesting space. But if you think about it, it's something I've been saying for many years now, the best productivity apps are the ones that you don't touch, the ones that you actually actively give you time to focus on what is actually important and work and remove the tedious actions behind it that allow you to get things done. They're not the things that just take you through those administrative processes. And that whole concept of administration will eventually disappear. 
So if you're interested in more of these, I will soon be releasing a podcast called Tools for Tomorrow, which dives into them, interviewing founders in the space and much more. But also I'm hopefully going to do some more insights on this channel here. So thank you very much. I look forward to inciting you with more insights. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely need AI for uh, explaining things. But anyway, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you in a future video. Cheerio.